Welcome to the module on uh, basics of uh, concrete. Today we will be discussing about the membrane curing, the advantages of membrane curing and what are the precautions one should take to ensure that the curing is effective using a membrane curing. What is a membrane curing compound? Membrane curing compound is a compound which helps to prevent the loss of moisture content from the concrete so that the concrete is properly cured which will result in the development of uh, strength of concrete to its uh, optimum values. Generally, as we discussed in the previous uh, modules also that curing is a process of controlling the loss of moisture from the concrete surface during the process of cement hydration and there are different methods to control this loss of moisture from the concrete surface which is happening due to the hydration of the cement. One of the methods which was discussed pre in the previous modules was water curing and in this module we will be discussing the membrane curing. So like the water curing, membrane curing is also a sort of curing which will form a film on top of the surface and that film is good enough to control the loss of moisture from the concrete surface to the atmosphere. There are two types in general. One is the wax based curing compound and second is the resin based curing compound. The wax based uh, curing compound is suitable for use on concretes that will not subsequently be painted, tiled or treated in any other manner. The wax contained in the material remains on the concrete surface and hampers the addition of future paint or mastic or any other activities subsequent to that particular surface. That is the reason why when you select a wax based curing compound, it is important to see that the surface on which the wax based curing compound is being applied should not get exposed to the further activities immediately. That is the reason why uh, when you apply a wax based curing compound between the two lifts of the columns generally you don't apply the wax based curing compound in the cross section of the column surface where you have to go for the second lift of the column or pier or any other structural member. So wherever the joints are, wherever the construction joint is concerned, those construction joints are not being treated by the wax based curing compound because it will be difficult for you to remove the wax before the activity or the before the next concreting activity is being taken place because the wax remains at that place for a longer duration of time and will act as a membrane as a separation membrane between the two elements which is being cast at different times and so that construction joint will become a weak construction joint. So in order to avoid that, the, those areas needs to be avoided by the application of the wax based curing compound. Coming to the resin based curing compound, all resin type is ideally suited for the curing of those areas where there will be a subsequent treatment applied to the concrete. It can be a construction joint area, it can be a lifts of uh, different columns. Since it leaves no adverse residue on the concrete surface, this can be easily applied on those areas and then the subsequent activities can be taken care of without much difficulty. In fact, the residual film of all resin type is harder than the wax resin and provides more resistance to abrasion. It also prepares the concrete surface for future treatments. So coming to the different types of curing compounds, if you see, it is basically divided into four types. First one is synthetic resin based uh, curing compound. Second is acrylic uh, curing compound. Third is wax based curing compound. And the fourth one is chlorinated rubber based uh, curing compound. We will be discussing each one of these in detail in the subsequent slides. Now starting with the synthetic resin based concrete curing compound. Synthetic resins will seal the concrete by forming a membrane. If you want to provide plastering, the membrane can be removed by washing it with hot water. Acrylic concrete curing compound if you see, 
Acrylics is made of, of polymers of acrylic acid. It also seals the concrete in good manner. It is having property of adhesion to the subsequent plaster. There is no need to wash the surface of the acrylic uh, applications with hot water if we want to provide uh, subsequent activities on the wall surface or any other activities like plastering. Wax based curing compound, if you see, wax compounds have similar properties like uh, resin based curing compound. The efficiency is uh, low, lower than the resin based curing compound, but it is effective in order to make sure that the curing of the concrete is being taken care. The wax membranes will lose its efficiency with the increment of the time. How do we apply the curing compound? Curing compounds can be applied by a spray application or it can be applied by a brush applications. During the application, it is required to understand the rate of application and the proper uniformity to be maintained in the application because this is the prime functional part of uh, application of curing compound. If it is not being applied properly, then the fine cracks which are being developed in the curing compound or the fine gaps, fine gaps which will be there in the curing me membrane which is covering the concrete surface will allow the evaporation of water from the concrete surfaces and the loss of moisture from the concrete surfaces cannot be restricted by forming this membrane. So the wax resin type is suitable for use on concretes that will not subsequently be painted, tiled or treated in any manner. The wax contained in the material remains on the concrete surface and hampers the addition of the feature paint or the mastics. This is one part. Then second is the application needs to be ensured that a proper membrane is formed on top of the concrete surface which is being cured because without being a proper application, the effectiveness of the applying application of curing compound will not be effective. Why? Because if there is a slight hairline crack, if it is because of the thinner applications of curing membranes, then which is not easily visible to you through a naked eye and uh, knowingly or unknowingly your moisture loss continues in the process thereby reducing the strength of the concrete. Second is chlorinated uh, rubber curing compound. Chlorinated rubber curing compound will form thick layer when applied because of the involvement of uh, rubberized materials in this uh, mix. It seals the concrete tightly and also fills the minute pores uh, present in the concrete. But the film cannot stay for a longer period and it will wear out in the long run. So what should be the quality of a curing compound? The curing compound should adhere to the five basic properties uh, to make sure that the quality of the curing compound is effective and the application of such curing compounds will ensure that the curing of the element, structural element is effective. First one is water retention, second is reflectance, third is the drying period, fourth one is the long term setting and then non-volatile matters. Properties of curing compound. A suitable liquid membrane curing compound is capable of maintaining a minimum of 95% of the original moisture content in the concrete mixes as compared to the water curing. That means if a curing compound is applied and if the curing compound is good enough, then it will give you a compressive strength equal to 95% of the strength of the tube which is being cured using a water curing. It is also economical and easy to apply and uh, there is no need to frequently check the surface whether the curing is effective or not. It is a one-time application and uh, if properly applied, then it can be rest assured that the complete duration of curing can be easily 
taken care of by the application of curing compound. Whereas if you are applying a water curing, every time you need to monitor those areas, every day you need to monitor those elements in order to make sure that the concrete element is completely covered with the water. The liquid membrane inhibits the loss of uh, mixed water by forming a protective membrane. So the formation of protective membrane and the importance of protective membrane is the better the protective membrane is the effective will be the curing of the structural element. So as far as application of curing compound is concerned, we need to take the utmost care in order to make sure that each and every part of the structural element is being cured properly and there is a uniformity in the formation of membrane on top of the structural element of concrete. The curing compound is effective up to 28 days and will then gradually dissipate without leaving a stain or a discoloring the concrete surfaces. Applying a curing compound, a curing compound should be applied to the surface of the concrete after it has been finished as soon as the free water on the surface has evaporated and there is no water, no visible water seen on top of the surface of the concrete element, whether it is a beam, slab or a foundation, whatever it is. Too early an application dilutes the membrane, too late results in it being absorbed by the concrete because of the heat generated in the form of hydration of cement with a consequent failure to the for membrane forms. So the right time of application is very important. Uh, one has to take the utmost care in order to make sure that the application of the curing compound is being effectively timed and uh, there is no hungry surface on top of which the curing is curing compound is being applied. Under that conditions, what is being generally done is you can just spray sprinkle water, wait for some time and then apply a curing compound that will be more effective in order to form the membrane of the curing compound. Then the rate of application should be uniform with the coverage normally in the range of 0 0.0, 0.2 to 0.25 liters per square meter or as per the manufacturer's recommendations. But it should not be less than 0.2 because the moment it is less than 0.2, the thickness which is generally required to be formed on top of the concrete surface will be less. And then the possibility of loss of moisture from the concrete surface is becoming high. The feasible, wherever feasible, two applications at right angles to each other will help and ensure that the complete uniform coverage and formation of membrane on top of the concrete surface is ensured. Initial two days moist curing and then the application of curing compound is also practical in most of the areas where you feel that the availability of the water is in abundance. But the areas where you don't have water to drink, forget about the curing and then Obviously, you need to depend upon the application of curing compound only. So under that conditions, it is very important to make sure that the timing of the curing compound as soon as it gets finished and going to be taking care of the final setting time is closing to the final setting time. The application of curing compound has to be there. In the DLCs also we apply the resin based curing compound. The curing shall be done by spraying with approved resin based aluminized reflective curing compounds conforming to ASTM C30981 in accordance with clause 602.9.12. As soon as the curing compound has lost its tackiness on top of the DLC surface, the surface shall be covered with a wet hydration cloth for three days and thereafter the rate of application shall be recommended by the suppliers. Wax based application of curing compound on top of the DLCs. Sometimes the first application shall be applied immediately after the final rolling of dry lean concrete is completed. As soon as the curing compound loses its tackiness, the surface, 
shall be covered with wet hessian cloth for 3 days just like what we have did in the resin based application of curing compound white pigmented curing compound with water retention index of more than 90% is the requirement for curing compound to be applied on top of the dlc the curing compound to be applied on dlc shall conform to the requirements given in bs7542 the curing compounds shall be applied over the entire exposed surface of the dlc surface curing compounds uh, if applied on a second application that means the second application of curing compound also referred to as the debonding application shall be applied 24 to 48 hours prior to the placement of the concrete pavement this will eliminate the use of separation membranes in as given in MORTH specifications so wherever you have the scarcity of separation membrane and whenever your work is supposed to be stopped because of the non availability of the separation membrane then this can be one of the possibilities that immediately within 24 to 48 hours you apply the second application of wax based curing compound on top of the dlc and then you can lay your pqc on top of it because such application of wax based curing compound will act as a debonding applications and will act as a separation membrane between the two layers that is dlc and pqc any damaged dry lay concrete shall be corrected prior to the second applications normally the manufacturer's instructions shall be followed for its application all resin type is ideally suited for curing of those areas where there will be a subsequent treatment applied to the concrete since it leaves no adverse residue on the concrete surface these are the brush applications of curing compound where one has to make sure that the gang involved in the application of curing compound should work in group so that they should not miss out the area any area untreated by the application of the curing compounds the residual film of the all the resin type is harder than the wax resin and provides more resistance to abrasion it also prepares the concrete surface for future treatments so you can have a spray application also as shown in the photograph to apply a curing compound but care has to be taken to make sure that the distance between the surface to be applied with the curing compound and the nozzle should be maintained in such a way that the application should be uniform on top of the surface and there should not be any loss because of the wind when it is being applied at a greater height advantages of curing compound if you see if wet curing is not possible then curing compound can be used to cure the concrete surface for larger areas of concrete surfaces which are open to sunlight wind etc curing is a big task and with the presence of curing compound it becomes easy because it is a one time application and thereafter you need not worry about the dryness or the temperatures being available in the working areas curing of concrete pavements runways bridge decks etc can be cured to reach the maximum strength with effectiveness of curing because in the presence of the curing compound membrane curing compound water curing will be difficult in these areas because of the exposed surface areas the rate of drying will be higher than the rate of pouring and it will be difficult to maintain such pour to make sure that the curing of these elements is maintained the other advantages of curing compound is you will have a maximum durability of the structures will be developed curing compound can be used for curing of canal linings dams columns beams slabs can be cured with the curing compound there is no single element which is in exceptional to the application of curing compound but if it is a wax based perfectly if it is a wax based then definitely the junctions of the elements of concrete need not be applied by the wax applications 
The membranes can be removed easily after the complete curing. ASTM C309 provides specifications and testings of uh, concrete curing compounds. So to summarize this module, we talked about the membrane curing, the different types of membrane curing, the application of a curing compound, advantages of curing compound. In the next upcoming module, we will be detailing about the steam curing. Till then, thank you very much for watching. Tune in for more updates.